So after we looked at the different types of workflows and codings and different parts of the process, let's have a general idea now on a BOD video workflow. This is an example of one. There could be different ones, but I think this is a kind of a good general example for uh, processing on-demand files and getting them to your users and possibly to 100,000 users. So the first step is the recording the video with a the camera, then putting it on Google file storage, or if you have something already on the file storage, and then delivering that either to a NAS, which is on a local network, or to uh, Azure Cloud, FTP, for example, SFTP, uh, AWS Cloud, or the Google Cloud. Once these files are accessible by the next step of the process, which is going to be the encoding, and basically with encoding, as we said, it always tries to maximize quality and minimize the file size. So this is a really important step where you have different components that can come in play to operate this compression. The, for example, we could have cloud encoding uh, or on-prem encoders. So these are um, kind of VMs that run uh, in the cloud and can run on a Kubernetes cluster, for example, and they make the encoding part uh, scalable and available on the cloud. So you don't, you don't need to have any hardware installed in uh, your local office. On-prem requires hardware locally, but it still runs on a computer. Whereas if you have, for example, hardware encoders, these are actual cards that are only specified for encoding to a very high uh, quality and they can take in a very high bitrate stream and file. So for something like ProRes, for example. Once this part reduces the file size while maximizing the quality, the next part in the chain is to have these files created by the different encoding profiles which we specified earlier. So there's a configuration here which says, okay, if you have a specific asset, then create different copies of it so our users can then consume it on a different device. So for example, there is no point in sending a five megabit video file to a telephone or a cell phone because it's going to be too heavy, right? The quality and the screen size of a phone does not require such high resolution and bitrate. So we create different copies at different resolutions and with different protocols. So we have Dash here and HLS as examples. Dash works on Android devices and on the web, whereas HLS as well works on the web and Android devices, but also Apple devices. The next step is the dynamic packaging, which can then add in, for example, server-side add insertion or, or DRM, depending on what's the use case and the business need is. And then those files, the final MPDs, which are the manifests, which describe how the video should be played, or M3U8 for HLS, are delivered on an origin and a CDN. Basically, they're put on a server, which, for example, could be Akamai, which then copies those files across all the different regions where, have the, where the edge servers are located so that the users who then access those videos from a specific device can load it much faster. So it really reduces the startup time if you want to scale to a lot of users, but also if you have users far away geographically from where you're storing the files, to have files on a CDN so that these can be accessed earlier and, and, and quicker than if you had to load from a very far off server. So startup time is very important. So the last part is actually the users, which then access the files through different devices and then get different resolution and bit rates depending on their context. And we have the video that here, who's kind of managing it, because then for each section, we can have analytics related to it to, to then tune the different encoding profiles. So for example, if we see that nobody is using the one megabit resolution by our analytics, handles, then we can say, okay, we don't, we don't need that version and we're not going to encode it. So we're not that going to waste space theoretically and actually because nobody's consuming it on the CDN server placing those assets there. 
And bear in mind that every video must be duplicated for the number of resolution in bit rates and divided into segments that make up the whole video so then the quality can be switched very quickly. So even more resolution rest decreases the cost of storing all these video files on a CDN. So this concludes our overview of a bot video workflow and hopefully you enjoyed it.